Hey everyone, welcome to my new series on game mechanics. So uh, we're going to start this episode one is going to be about shields, armor, and hull damage. The reason why I think the game mechanics are so important is if you understand, for example, from this video, how shields, armor, and hull damage work, then you can make better decisions about what you want to use when you do uh, when you select weapons and is it worth getting that new technology spending some extra time getting that one level higher of armor for example and then the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to point out a mistake that's been on my guide and also been in some of my earlier videos uh, and that's because i'd asked a question of uh, the developers and they weren't sure about an answer they thought it was one way um, I had assumed that that was correct. And then I did some testing and I found out that it wasn't, uh, and they couldn't remember actually which way it had gone. So this has to do with, uh, damage reduction. So I'm going to discuss that at length here so we can make some corrections and with these corrections. So with this correction, uh, I think we have a complete picture now of how shields, armor, and hull work. Let's take a look. Okay. So we're going to use the Lance missile for this example. And it's going to be hitting um, the shield and armor you see at the right. So this is a bigger chart than what you see, but I zoomed in on the chart. You can find this chart in my guide, which is available through the link uh, at the bottom of the description. So when a Lance missile is fired, uh, it starts with 38 damage, which you can see from this stat. Now this stat is available both in the technology screen and also in the design screen. So you can call up these windows uh, separately for each one of these uh, components, and you'll see that the damage from a lance missile is 38. Now, no, most weapons other than missiles have to take a damage reduction from range, but this one doesn't matter. So wherever, wherever you shoot a missile from, it's not going to change, but other weapons, you would take that into consideration, and you'll see that on the next example we do with torpedoes. The next thing that happens is if the missile has a positive shield bypass, in this case, 25%, that means a quarter of the damage is going to pass through the shield. So if you look at my chart right here, you'll see that the 38 gets split to 29 and 10. The 29 is going to go on to hit the shields. The 10 is going to pass through the shields and hit the armor. So let's follow the 29 track, which is 75% of the damage. And you'll see it will hit the shield, but there's a thing called shield resistance. that, And if you look at the chart on the right, this is from the ship that's getting hit. The component is the Corvidian shields, and they have a shield resistance of one. So that means that every missile or every torpedo or every bullet that gets shot and hits the shield, it loses one damage. So you can see that when you have a lot of small weapons versus one big weapon, a lot of small weapons are going to all lose one each, whereas a big weapon only pays this price once. So anyway, if you look at the explosion on the shield, you'll see it's 28, and that's how much damage the missile is going to do. We're going to demonstrate this with an actual uh, example of both of these technologies, both the weapons and the defenses here, and we'll see that it, it literally equals 28. The 10 shield bypass goes on through the shield. So if you follow the this line here, the 10 line, two things are going to happen after this. It's going to pass through the shields. Then it's going to lose 10% from armor bypass. Now, it's actually an armor reduction. They call it armor bypass, but it's actually uh, confusing because it doesn't bypass the armor. There is real by armor bypass that will bypass the armor and go into a hull. We'll see that in the torpedo example in a few minutes. But a negative bypass rating simply means you lose 10% and you don't gain anything. There's no benefit. Whereas the shield bypass, which was a positive bypass earlier, means you lose 25%, but that keeps going and hits the armor. So anyway, from our 10, we lose one. And I should mention now that these are decimals. I round them up because the game rounds them up when they finally do hit. But I carried the decimals through. So for example, uh, the 10 was actually a 9.5 earlier. 9.55 or something like that. So here too, it's not exactly one. It's not exactly nine, but that's what it rounds to. And in the end, there'll be minor discrepancies. For example, this four damage to the armor might be three, might be four. And I've actually seen it vacillate between the two, which is interesting. Anyway, the 10 gets reduced by one, by 10% from the armor bypass. The nine continues through. And then finally, when it hits the armor, right before it hits the armor, the armor has a reactive rating, which which reflects, I guess, so you might think of it that way, five damage in this case for enhanced armor. That's a pretty good armor 
pretty, I think it's tier four or five, um, but it's a reactive rating of five, which means the nine is reduced further to four. Now, again, it's a decimal here. It's 3.55, if I remember correctly. So you might see three or four damage, but it's within one, and that's good enough for your calculations or to understand what's happening. So finally, a four damage hits the armor. Okay, so a 28 damage to the shields and four damage to the armor. But there's one last thing to talk about. Now, this doesn't happen often, and the later the shields, the higher tier shields, it happens less and less. But if you look over here under the Corvidian shields uh, stats, you'll see something called shield penetration chance, 15%. That is completely separate from shield bypass. Uh, there's a 15% chance that every missile or every torpedo that hits will actually partially penetrate the shields independent of the weapon's shield bypass, okay? So any weapon, even a weapon without shield bypass, has a 15% chance of 40% of its damage passing through the shield. So the shield penetration ratio, this other number I've circled here, that's how much would pass through the shields and hit the armor if this 15% chance happens. I haven't seen it very often. I'm sure it happens and I'm not watching because I don't watch every missile, but uh, it can happen and every shield has this rating. All right, so let's now take a look at uh, an example in action to show this 28 uh, shield damage and four armor damage. All right, so let's use a uh, live demonstration here. Uh, we're gonna have Lance missiles. So let's take a look at the configuration of my ship that's firing. We've got Lance missiles with a damage of 38. So these stats are exactly the same as I showed in the uh, chart earlier. And of course, uh, it is not gonna be affected by range, that's fine. And it's got the shield bypass and the armor bypass just like we discussed. So uh, we're gonna expect all of those calculations that I did on the previous slide to uh, show up. And we're gonna see if we get this exact or very close damage to both the shield and the armor. The other thing we want to take a look at is the enemy ship. This is a pirate ship. Uh, he's slightly different, but the numbers haven't changed. So he doesn't have the exact same technology I showed on the chart before. Uh, but if we take a look at his stats here, you'll see uh, his, uh, trying to th yeah, his uh, shield is a little different. So, but look at the shield resistance. That's all that matters. So it's still one. So that's not going to change. The armor itself, I believe, is the same too, so it's going to be a five. So I think we're good with the armor. So let's see what happens. Let's go to the live battle. All right, so uh, my ship is shooting the missiles. We're going to zoom in on them. They may not hit, and of course, if a PD weapon, point defense weapon, hits one and damages it, we won't count that either. Uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to select his ship. Watch the uh, shield here and the armor here. Watch the numbers change. I'll pause it as soon as it hits. Let's see if the first one hits. Uh, yeah, it did. Okay, so take a look. So I dropped to 741 and 247. So I lost three on the armor. I said that might happen three or four because it's a decimal 3.55, I think. So I guess there's some randomness in there too. But the shield definitely took uh, the 28 damage exactly what we hit from 768 down to uh, 740. That's 28 damage. All right. So let's take a look now at a torpedo hitting a, a ship without any shields. So we can see what happens when the shields are gone and now you're getting into armor and hull. We wanna see particularly what happens with the hull. Okay, so we have the same setup before. On the left side, we have the stats for the weapon. In this case, it's an Epsilon torpedo. And on the right side, I have a summary of the defenses. All right, so let's start from the beginning. So the Epsilon torpedo has 44 damage, and like most weapons, except for missiles, they will lose some of their damage strength due to range. Now, I just picked 25% here because it's, uh, I'll, I'll pretend it was at a thousand, a uh, range of a thousand, but it has a range of 2,000, as you can see here, so it could lose more. It, if, it's, if it's at maximum range, it's gonna lose almost 50%. And it'll, the stat for damage at maximum range is, is right there. So it's about 22 damage, right? But anyway, let's do an example here where we start at 44 and we shoot at a range of 1,000 and we lose 25%. So we immediately we drop to 33. Now, just like the 
previous example we did where there was a shield bypass, some weapons have an armor bypass, a positive armor bypass. So if you remember, the missile had a negative armor bypass. That's not really bypass. That's just they lose 10% of their damage when hitting armor. But this torpedo has positive armor bypass. So that means, in this case, 40%. 40% of the damage from the torpedo is going to pass through the shield. That's the 13 on the right side here. And then 20 will continue onto the armor. Let's follow the track on the left. Uh, one more thing that will happen is it will lose four to the reactive rating of the armor. So this is heavy armor. It's got reactive rating. We did cover this in the previous example too. So the 20 damage reduces down to 16 damage. And I used a little different style graphic here to show you um, how you can see, you know, the armor versus the hull in the little graphic that appears on every ship when you select it. And I showed you this earlier when we did the live example. So I kind of designed this slightly differently. So you'll see that last 16 damage, which it lost four to the reactive rating, hits the, sh the armor, which used to be 520. And if you look at the final result at the bottom here, it's down to 504. Okay. It's harder to run an example for this, by the way, so I'm not going to because uh, I can't get an enemy ship with the exact weapon I want to hit my uh, shieldless weapon. But I have tested this. It does work. Um, and uh, you, can you could test it yourself. It just takes a lot more uh, effort than it does for the other one. Now, let's follow the second track, the bypass. Okay, So 13, as we mentioned earlier, is going to head directly towards the hull and pass through the armor. Now, two things happen to this 13 on the way to the hull. Number one, it loses 32% to damage reduction. There's a lot of things that go into damage reduction. The uh, command center here you can see has a 5% damage reduction. And again, higher techs will have higher numbers, uh, better damage reduction. Uh, crew systems have a 2%, but they don't stack. So if you have and you often will have two or three crew quarters, they don't stack. If you add more than one crew quarter, it won't help. You're just going to get 2%. So everybody basically gets 2% damage reduction on every design that they create. And then the last thing is an, a damage control unit. Both, that's optional as well as the command center, although most ships, you know, command centers are pretty early tech, although there are different tiers of it. But damage control units, you may not have researched that path. I think it is a good path to research because it does repair the ship. Uh, in fact, it doubles the base repair from the command center. Uh, you can see that stat here. They both have 0 0.10 per second. So this is a really good stat. Uh, and the damage control unit doubles it. And it does protect both the components and the hull by reducing the total damage. You know, at this point... You're taking damage directly to the hull. I don't I don't know how long you're going to last. I don't think the damage control unit is going to make that much of a difference here. Uh, but when there's armor bypass like this, it it is useful, right? Because you've still got armor. The armor is going to last for a while, but these bypass weapons are getting through. So in this particular example, when, when, a, when defending against a torpedo, the damage reduction does help. Because as that hull gets damaged, so do components, right? And so you might lose your warp drive. You might lose... Um, uh, some other, you know, the, oh, your defensive weapons at this point or your PD weapons, for example. So these will uh, reduce the damage that could be, I put it here in yellow at the bottom, that could happen. Every time the hull gets hit, you could be losing components. And if you lose an important component, like your hyperdrive, you can't get away. So the damage culture training unit helps with that. So all three of those add up to 32% to damage reduction. So I, I have a chart in my guide that shows all of these optional components or all of these miscellaneous components. So let me call that up here and take a look. Uh, so this will show you the effects on um, re damage reduction, uh, which components do what, which general components do what. Uh, one of the ones I love here is the trace scanner, and I'm going to talk about that when I do my next uh, mechanics on sensors. Uh, the trace scanner actually increases damage. So if we go back to this chart here, you'll see the 44 might start higher. So if you have a trace scanner, it's going to start 5% um, higher. So there are things that do affect damage beyond what I'm showing here for the initial damage, but the mechanics would work the same going through the rest of the chart. 
All right, so a lot of discussion about damage reduction. So that you can see on this, the second column here, the second, uh, the bypass 13 got reduced to nine from the damage reduction. And then just like armor has a reactive rating, every hull has a reactive rating too. You won't find this stat, unfortunately, in the design screen. Uh, it will only show up in the technology, in the research screen. If you look at the different hull types, it will show you this reactive rating, but I believe that it was an omission in the design screen. So you won't know. I did make a chart of these too for uh, in my guide for all the different hulls. So you can take a look there, have that up when you're designing a ship. But uh, this particular one, the fleet destroyer hull has a hull reactive rating of four. So just like armor reactive rating, that's going to take four damage right off the top of every torpedo or at least the bypass damage from the torpedo that hits the hull. And of course, if there was no armor left, it would take it from the entire torpedo, right? So if there was no armor and the torpedo got straight through, it would lose 32% damage reduction and four off the bottom. Uh, so 13 down to nine, down to five. So we lost four, he lost four uh, damage from the reactive rating. And then whatever's left goes into the hull. And so you can see in the final result at the bottom there, the hull would reduce from 100 to 95 percent, and there'd be some possible component damage. Again, the damage reduction technology does help with that. All right, so that pretty much sums up how shields, armor, and hull work in how they deal with damage. Okay, and then we're going to do I'm going to do a bunch of videos in this series showing some other mechanics. And as I mentioned earlier, knowing how these mechanics works helps you make better decisions about what weapons you want to use, whether you want to spend more money on a, the next technology of shields. I've mentioned this before in my design video, but I'm going to mention it again here. When you upgrade, when you research a technology that just says version two, version three, you don't have to retrofit your ships. You don't have to send them back to the spaceport. It's really, as one of my uh, readers mentioned uh, use the good metaphor that it's really a software upgrade. So if you do get a new version of a weapon like Epsilon version two here, you don't have to retrofit. It's only when the name of the weapon or the name of the shield or the name of the um, armor changes that you actually have to go back to a spaceport or a planet and retrofit it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. Uh, I like to keep it nice and short. I'm trying to do these about 15 minutes each for this series. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. So every time I come out with a new one for this series, you can uh, be alerted that it's out. Good hunting.